Regression analysis begins with collecting and summarizing data using a scatter plot. Reed Auto sold 14 cars when it ran one television ad. It sold 24 cars when it ran three television ads. It sold 18 cars when it ran two television ads. Later, when it ran one television ad, it sold 17 cars. And then, when it ran three television ads for the second time, it sold 27 cars. The regression equation is estimated by hand using the equations for the slope and intercept. We could have used Microsoft Excel to estimate this equation. The estimated intercept B0 was equal to 10. Substituting this into the estimated regression equation yields y hat equal to 10 plus B1 times xi. The estimated slope was equal to 5 cars per ad. Substituting this into the estimated regression equation yields y hat equal to 10 plus 5 times x. To graph this line, start at intercept 10. At this point here, x is 0 and y is equal to 10. Plug in x equals 0. 0 times 5 is 0. 0 plus 10 is 10. So we start at this point right here, the intercept. Go to the right one add and up 5 cars. That's the slope. When the ads increase by 1, the average number of cars sold will increase by 5. Again, when we run one more ad, the average number of cars sold will increase by 5. Finally, if we run a fourth ad, the number of cars we expect to sell will increase by 5. The mean of x and y were 2 and 20. So every regression line Every regression line will pass through the point corresponding the, to the average x and the average y. In our data, using this example, the sample mean of y was equal to 20. The sample mean of x was equal to 2. The fifth observed value of x was equal to 3 the fifth observed value of y is equal to 27. The difference between the fifth observed value of y and y's mean is equal to 27 minus 20, which is equal to 7. Since SST equals the sum of square deviations between the observed value of y and its mean, the fifth deviation from y's mean, 7 has to be squared, which equals 49. The SST is found by computing the remaining four square deviations between the observed values of y and its mean, and then summing all five of these up. Plugging the fifth observed value of x, which equals 3, into the regression equation yields 10 plus 5 times 3, or 25. The difference between the fifth observed value of y and the fifth predicted value of y is equal to 27 minus 25 or 2. Since SSE equals the sum of squared deviations between the observed value of y and a predicted value of y, the fifth deviation from the fifth predicted value of y, 2, has to be squared. This equals 4. 
Now the SSE is found by computing the remaining four square deviations between the observed value of y and the predicted values of y and then summing all five of these up. The difference between the fifth predicted value of y and the mean of y is equal to 25 minus 20 which is 5. Since SSR equals the sum of square deviations between the predicted values of y and the mean of y, the fifth deviation between the fifth predicted value of y and the mean of y, in this case 5, has to be squared, which equals 25. The SSR is found by computing the remaining four square deviations between the predicted values of y and the mean of y, and then summing all five of these up. The values that are in red were computed in a previous table. Recall from the previous slide that the fifth predicted value of y was 25. The square deviation between the fifth observation of y and its mean was 49. The square deviation between the fifth observation of y and the fifth predicted value of y was 4. The square deviation between the fifth predicted value of y and the mean of y was 25. Plugging the first observed value of x, which equals 1, into the regression equation yields 10 plus 5 times 1, which equals 15. Plugging the second observed value of x, which is 3, into the regression equation yields 10 plus 5 times 3, which is 25. Plugging the third obser observed value of x, 2 in this case, into the regression equation yields 10 plus 5 times 2, which is equal to 20. Plugging the fourth observed value of x, 1, into the regression equation yields 10 plus 5 times 1, which is equal to 15. Summing the square deviations from x's mean yields the total variation in x. Summing the square deviations from y's mean yields the total sum of squares, which is also known as the total variation in y, and is equal to 114. Now we already computed this previously. The second to last column is the column of squared residuals or estimated errors. The square deviation between the first observed value of y and first predicted value of y is equal to 14 minus 15 and then we square that difference. Since the difference is 1, 1 squared is 1. The square devi deviation between the second observed value of y and second predicted value of y is equal to 24 minus 25, which is equal to 1 squared, or 1. The square deviation between the third observed value of y and third predicted value of y is equal to 18 minus 20 squared, which is equal to 2 squared, or 4. The square deviation between the fourth observed value of y and fourth predicted value of y is equal to 17 minus 15 squared, or 2 squared, or 4. Summing the squared residuals, or squared errors, yields the sum of squares due to error, which equals 14. The square deviation between the first predicted value of y, 15, and the mean of y, which is 20, yields a difference of 5. 15 minus 20 is 5. When we square that, we get 25. 
the square deviation between the second predicted value of y, 25, and the mean of y, 20, is equal to 25 minus 20. That difference is equal to 5. Squaring it yields 25. The square deviation between the third predicted value of y, 20, and the mean of y, which is also equal to 20, is 20 minus 20, which is equal to 0. 0 squared is 0. The square deviation between the fourth predicted value of y, 25, and the mean of y, 20, is equal to 25 minus 20, which is 5, and 5 squared is 25. Summing the square deviations between the predicted value of y and the mean of y yields the sum of squares due to regression, which is 100 in this case. The coefficient of determination is equal to the sum of squares due to regression divided by the total sum of squares, which equals 100 divided by 114, or 0.8772. The interpretation of this is the coefficient of determination times 100% of the variability in y can be explained by the estimated linear relationship between x and y. Since the coefficient of determination times 100% is 88%, variable y is car sold and variable x is TV ads, the interpretation is 80% of the variability in cars sold can be explained by the estimated linear relationship between TV ads and cars sold. Since the sign of B1 is positive, the correlation coefficient equals the positive square root of the coefficient of determination, which in this case is 0.8771, which equals 0.9366. Now again, the correlation coefficient equaling the positive square root of the coefficient of determination only holds when there is one independent variable, which is the case in chapter 14, but not the case in chapter 15.